our topic here is a design inquiry, talking about problem-driven approach to teaching in general. Uh, my name is Hebron. I'm going to, uh, I had to do a little bit of problem solving, ironically, when I got here, so I'm going to have to switch up the way I do my presentation. Um, so I'm a former engineer from the University of Waterloo who kind of fell in love with teaching from science camp, of all things, um, and then changed careers. So I teach at Coronation. Well, I'm a grade six uh, cool cat. And uh, there's a couple of things that I'm involved in in the entrepreneurial community in our region, which is actually one of the probably best spots in Canada for being an entrepreneur. One is in the, the ed tech sector, and the other one is actually the gaming sector, the two projects that I'm involved in. So this, these ideas that I'm kind of talking to comes from that lens and the experience talking to people in that community. So uh, let's get started. Um, what's your purpose? When you think about yourself as a teacher, what is the, the purpose of like, My goal is, my big, my overall arching purpose is what? What do you think you'd say if somebody asked you, what's your purpose as an educator? There's no wrong answers. I'm already putting you on the spot. I just started. Saw <laughs> <laughs> so a hand up. Is that a hand up? Is that a hand up? Uh, I, I, I think as a grade four or five teacher, we're, we're, our, my big purpose is to instill a love for education right now. Okay. So I hear like a love for education. Yeah. Uh, it's going to inspire work or hopefully open up, but spark interest in things that perhaps otherwise may not. Yeah. So there's some connections. Inspiring, sparking a, an, an interest in something. Um, allow students to feel like they're part of something bigger, bigger purpose, uh, meaning. Meaning, purpose beyond yeah. just themselves. Yeah. yeah. Facilitator. A lot of kids uh, do come up really big ideas, but it's just not having the know how to work with that. Kids are like natural creators, that creativity is there. I've got little ones, four little ones at home, they're always. Yeah. Just engage to just engage with them and take another awesome. awesome. and be able to engage yeah. them. And personal too, just yeah. find the roadblock for the kids that aren't like figure out what is in your way and make learning accessible to the kids that are sitting back and not participating because there's always a reason. Yeah. Find the roadblock that's getting in the way that they're accessing it. Maybe it's like a, a mindset or an attitude or an experience that's impacting them. Cool. So, I, I always like to start with trying to get a, a handle on what you guys are thinking about and what you're passionate about. Um, oh, no, you don't like that. Go back to the arrow. Okay, so you know the, it, sh it shouldn't say man, but you know the old adage, give a man a fish, Guess you remember that saying? Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. Give a man fish, eats for a day. Teach a man fish, eats for life. Here's, I'm going to put a twist in it. You ready? What happens when the fish are gone? What is this person doing? So, one of my big focuses over the last couple of years has been I've always kind of focused on her. You need to. I need to teach this kid this, I need to teach this kid this, I need to teach this kid this. And I start to think about what they're going to be walking out into when they're done with 12, done college, yada yada, and I go, especially since I'm involved in a lot of stuff at Communitech and that, and that, that entrepreneurial world, I go, well, I have no idea what you're going to have to deal with and what you're going to face. Um, mostly because it's so dynamic, it's changing so fast. One of the biggest stats right now is it used to be that you left college and you got hired, right? Right now, that is changing fast. People leave college and they start their own company. Which is weird, right? Like, how, can you start, how is that feasible? Like, how do you just start a company? But a lot of that is around the idea of, I've got an idea, it's only a problem. I don't want to do this for a company, I'm just going to do it for myself. And that's something that's changing. So, how do we knowing we want to engage kids and we want to get rid of roadblocks, knowing we want to you know, instill that, that passion. How do we change from this to this? We focus on how to think instead of what to think. Because what, what to think does is it gives them ability to, to use a strategy for so long until they step into something completely unfamiliar. And it's like, right? Like, oh, I, I don't know what to do, Mr. J. Never 
seen this before. Yeah, you know what? That's what it's going to be like when you go out there because you won't have ever seen this. But can you still, if you have a frame in some way of coping with the fact that you've never seen this before? So let's look at academic failures, people who are like, did not do well at school. Right? This is a kind of a crazy list. Um, I was looking into this the other day. Um, and there's more, obviously, but these are the ones that you recognize, right? Facebook guy, Microsoft, Apple, of course, Albert Einstein, who was told by his teacher that he was essentially good for nothing. And the sad part of his story is his dad died before any of the success came out. Um, and he wasn't, of all the math and equations that he did in the science, that he wasn't like actually like a educated official in an official capacity. Most of the stuff he learned, he learned by problem solving at a patent office. Because you'd get a, here, check if this patent's good, and you'd be like, oh, I'm going to have to research this, figure this out, and so problem solving. And um, so when we look at people like that, there's a lot of kids in our class that I reflect on, and I go, oh man, like, you don't do well in the classical school setting, but when you're in the real world, you're amazing. I thought some grade sevens once, and we took them out on an outdoor ed trip that you do. And these boys that did nothing in my science class and just were like, at best, these, they were in control. They were in their element and they were actually engaged. They loved what they're doing. We were doing a, a, a pond study, you know? Um, and I was like, well, these guys are leading the whole class. The whole class has no, no idea what to do. They're sitting in there with their boots and these guys are leading. Why? Because they kind of, they, these kids kind of have, when it's real life, they kind of engage and they know, okay, this is a real problem. I can kind of stumble through it and figure it out. Um, in school, though, they have a mentality that goes, oh, I just have to get it right and fit into this. And it's not because we always necessarily teach that way, it's just because it's been like that for so long. Um, and when you think about industry, and when you think about the future, you know, we talk, there's a lot of videos we've seen how a lot of our classical education was set up for Victorian, you know, industrial age on the rows, teach exactly how to do things, and then you can follow protocol, get do well in the industrial revolution, which is perfect. And we talk about changing that, um, but there's one thing that's always constant. It's not like everything's out the window. One thing's always constant. We're always going to have problems. And this is what came up actually ironically when I was... <laughs> we had problems this morning, and we were solving things and plugging stuff, and we looked around and it was like, problems will always be there. <laughs> yeah. um, so, what, if there's one kind of pattern of thinking that I would want my kids to focus on, my students to focus on and learn, it's this idea that, okay, um, problems are always going to be there. Like, I'm talking about real problems, I'm not talking about math problems, you know what I mean? Like, real world problems are always going to be there. Do you have a framework or an idea of how you approach a problem, any problem? whether it's uh, social, economical, political, any problem, there's a framework that works that can give, help us walk through it and think through it. So, this is kind of my focus this year, and I've just started it um, this September, so we're in the middle of it, so I don't have it all figured out, so this is kind of like, hey, jump in with me. Um, from the entrepreneurial world and my engineering world, I've kind of Hold some stuff, and I've been in a couple of uh, really cool um, Google uh, education presentations where this has come up. The design cycle that has lots of different names, and, and then we call it design cycle, and, and a lot of times people just think like just engineering design, like I'm making a MacBook design. But this is kind of a cycle that works for any team. It, if it's like a, a political problem or a social economic problem, um, it still works. And a lot of it, we start with empathize, which is like, there's a user involved, right? So, uh, it wouldn't be a problem if somebody was infected, right? Like if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's there, who cares, right? But if a tree falls and falls on my backyard, now we're a problem, right? Because my backyard's next to the forest. So we have to understand, empathize, understand who, because a lot of times we solve problems, but we end up not actually solving them because we don't really understand what the problem was and who the, the person was. And then we define the problem, and then we, we ideate, which means like we come up with all kinds of crazy ideas and keep brainstorming um, until something starts to click. We prototype the idea that we're like, oh, I think this is going to work. Um, and then we start testing, and then you know what? 
when we test, we're going to find more problems. Are you yeah. sharing these slides, by the way? Yeah, I can. I actually have, um, what I was going to do is, you guys are, are all on GAF, right? Yeah. If I just, um, I was going to jot down all your names, awesome. get you to write your names. I have actually a full folder of a lot of materials that I'm kind of making up, organizers and things, and I, awesome. Thanks, I can just take them from there and then use them, or change them, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of the framework. Um, and this is uh, something that we're starting to do in every aspect of our of our of our grade six experience. Um, so some of the stuff I'm going to share with you is we're, we're using things like, and I and I took this from um, someone who does first design, um, future design schools organization. So some of it is from there, and I've changed it around. So you, you, we, we talk about uh, people as users, okay, who's your user, what do they say, what do they do, what do they like, let's start thinking like them so they we can understand why this is a problem. Um, um, we talked about how are you going to gather data, who are you going to ask, where are you going to, instead of just doing one of those, you know, really simple surveys, like, you need to be intentional about your questions because the way you ask it is going to affect what information you get and that can affect you. What you think people need solved, but they didn't really actually need that solved. Um, a lot of this stuff is like entrepreneurial thinking, kind of zoom down into junior level. Um, and then we, we identify extreme users because your users are never the same. So you're going to have to kind of have a universal design where you take that when we make something fit this user, so in our, in our setting, and I'm going to get to it and jump in again, but in our setting we start with our classroom because that's like, hey, you've been in the classroom for like seven years now, right? This is a familiar context. Let's start here when we talk about the extremely outgoing user, right? The person who needs things loud and open and free, and the person who needs things quiet and controlled or else can't focus. And how do we design a classroom? Because both need to be, how do we make our classroom so both people are successful, right? So what are their wants and then what are their needs? We need to distinguish between the person who wants to just chat or they need to talk things out to be able to understand concepts and things like that. Um, so we went through that process, and then we've jumped into, let's talk about the problems that come up in our classroom, and this is the fun part, I love it, because kids just get really animated and then they get passionate about things. Um, so we brainstorm some problems. Problems are always, and this is just four areas where you're like, okay, let's just talk about, uh, the, there's always multi-dimensional issues with problems. Is it a people problem? Is it a, an organization problem? Is it a, a design problem? Like, hey, like, this is too high, it's too low, it's too big, it's too small. Um, and then is it something completely different that we, we can't address in those areas? And then we go into, we have, we're going to zoom right in and try to boil down our problem to one statement. So we can say, hey, this is it. If somebody's talking to you in an elevator, right? and you, in the entrepreneurial world, there's the elevator picture. You've got 30 seconds. What are you, what's your problem? How are you going to solve it? Tell, tell me. So that helps them really think about what matters and not be like, oh, no, 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 and go off into tangents, because they tend to do that. That's, their, like, that's the facilitation that they needed. And then we reword it so we can see how might we, so that they can help them brainstorm some solutions later. Um, so here's the problem. We did some brainstorming. This is my favorite part, okay? So you have to excuse me if I start laughing. Uh, so Ebony's like, I don't like that Caleb's, <laughs> mine and Caleb's desk are so close to that computer. Desk. Look at that, man. Like, snap the picture. like, yeah, that is really close. Let's just take it. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. does anyone get through there? I don't know. That she was like, this is, I don't, I don't like this. Um, and there's many more of these. There's